In the Confucian classic named The Rites of Zhu, archery is one of the six noble arts, along with rites, music, charioteering, literature, and mathematics. Another Confucian classic, The Book of Rites, has a whole chapter on the meaning of archery as both the way of benevolence and a means of ensuring that one conducts oneself correctly. It is therefore not surprising that Joseon, which was a Confucian state, saw archery not as a simple contest of skill, but as something that could also be an elevated Confucian ceremony. In particular, the archery contest known as the Desadie, which involved the king and his court, was a major event that also involved rites and music. The Joseon kings held this event at Songyongguan, an academic institution for the training of government officials, where Joseon's greatest minds gathered. In the early Joseon period, the Desadie was held a total of four times between 1477 and 1534. Following this, a period of turbulence with wars such as the Japanese invasions of Korea in 1592 to 1598 and the Manchu invasion of 1636 made it impossible to hold the event. But during the 18th century reign of King Yongju, the Desarie Royal Archery Ceremony was resumed. In 1743, Yongju traveled to Songyongguan and held the first Desarie in over 200 years. Through this great event, Yongju hoped to let the whole country know that Korea's traditions would be restored. As a result, he ordered that the Desarie Ugwe be compiled to leave an in-depth record of the event. The Desarie Ugwe meticulously records the process of preparation before the event, the three rehearsals held, what happened on the day, each of the participants, and the outcomes of the event. This Ugwe includes several pictures, showing in detail what took place and in what order. The pictures show the king shooting arrows, courtiers shooting arrows, and the king awarding prizes and penalties in accordance with the archer's results. The Desadie Ugwe's inclusion of not just one, but three detailed pictures of the scene of a single event is a very unusual feature. To set the scene, the Ugwe tells us that on the day before the event, rain had fallen, ending a long drought. We can imagine how joyful the king and his retainers were, thanks to this welcome rain, as they set out to conduct a splendid revival of the state archery ceremony. Let's now take a closer look at the Ugwe's three pictures and see what happened that day. On his way to the event, Yongju stopped at Songyongguan Confucian Shrine, where he made a ritual offering before proceeding to where the royal tent had been erected for the event. Three platforms had been set up here. On the highest was the seat for King Yongju. On the second was a purple mat with a dragon pattern from which Yongju would shoot. On the third platform were seats for the royal family and courtiers. At the east end of the third platform stood three tables with chests coated with red lacquer. These chests held Yongju's finger and wrist guards and his bow and arrows. Tables had also been placed at the bottom of the stairs on each side of the platform. These held the prizes to be awarded by the king, the alcohol to be drunk as a penalty by those who did not manage to hit the target, and arrows for the participating courtiers who were lined up waiting. To heighten the atmosphere with happy music, two groups of musicians were seated inside red lacquered gates to the east and west of the archery field. The targets that the king and his courtiers had to hit stood at a distance of 90 paces south of the king's seat. Ten paces to the east and west of the targets, groups of retainers stood with drums and gongs. With his back to the targets stood a man with a flag ready to collect fallen arrows and a screen fence had been set up to protect the retainers lined up beside the targets from stray arrows. With the eyes of everyone on him, King Yongju took his place on his shooting platform. When the king pulled his bowstring taut, three phrases of music were played, and when he released his arrow, another four were played. 
In this way, Yongju shot a total of four arrows. Following the same process, Yongju shoots a total of four arrows, hitting the target specially reserved for him with three of them. The Ugwe tells us that of the 30 courtiers who participated, only five managed to hit the target with all four of their arrows. So we can see that Yongju showed some impressive skills in front of his court. After King Yongju finished, the courtiers took their turn before being given prizes or penalties depending on their performance. These scenes are well depicted in two pictures, one showing the courtiers shooting and one showing the giving of prizes and penalties. While the king's target has a bear's head painted on it, the courtiers' targets are painted with deer's heads. The courtiers shoot in pairs, first bowing to each other, and then, once a phrase of music has been played, letting an arrow fly. If an arrow hits the mark, a drum sounds. If it misses the mark, a gong sounds. From behind the screen fence to the east of the targets, people holding flags of six colors announce where the arrows hit. If the arrow hits the center of the target, a red flag is raised. If it hits the upper part of the target, a yellow flag is raised. If it hits the lower part of the target, a black flag is raised. If it hits the left of the target, a blue flag is raised. And if it hits the right of the target, a white flag is raised. And if it misses the target, a green flag is raised. On this particular day, a wide variety of courtiers participated in the contest, including members of the royal family, civil officials of various ranks, and military officials. The five who hit the target with all four arrows were awarded both inner and outer garments, while the nine who hit the target with three arrows were awarded inner garments. The six who hit the target with two arrows were awarded bows and arrows, while the seven who hit the target with one arrow were awarded bows, and the three who did not hit the target even once were forced to drink shots of alcohol as a penalty. But since even the penalty only involved drinking something delicious, the event was no doubt fun for everyone. Once the archery contest was over and the prizes and penalties awarded, King Yongju ordered the food prepared for him to be offered to his courtiers and to the proctors for the exams that had been carried out at Songyungguan on the same day as the archery. But citing the fact that it was a lean, hard year for agriculture, he ordered that no alcohol be served. Following this, the king got into his royal palanquin and returned to Chongdokung Palace. Earlier in the day, when the king was on his way to the event, he had stopped by the lecture hall at Songyongguan, where the state examinations for Confucian scholars were being held. Yongju had set a four-character Chinese phrase as the topic for the exam. The characters he chose can be translated as Joyful Rain Observing Virtue or Welcome Rain and the Observation of Virtue. The part of the phrase meaning Joyful Rain reflects the king's joy at the rain that had fallen the previous day, ending a long drought. For the state examination, Yangju linked this concept of welcome rain with the archery ceremony through the second part of the phrase, which literally means observing virtue, but which is used in the Confucian classic texts to refer to archery. The phrase that Yangzhou chose for the state examination allows us to guess how happy he must have been revive the state archery ceremony after 200 years, letting arrows fall like rain again after a drought. Perhaps that feeling is shared by historians today when they discover precious documentary heritage such as the Ugwe. Perhaps we too can understand that feeling as we rediscover traditions and culture brought back to life before our eyes through such documents, and can understand how protecting the common memories contained in these documents which might otherwise be forgotten and disappear, enriches our history and culture, like welcome rain on dry soil, providing nourishment for the further flowering of new culture. <laughs>